everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today we are painting over Dr. Sleep, the movie cover of the book. If you're new here and haven't seen my previous paint overs, I paint on movie covered books because I dislike them thoroughly and I think a lot of people have the same opinion. If you're of the opinion that I shouldn't paint on my things that I own myself, then uh, I would just uh, leave because this isn't a video for you. In this video we're also doing a giant giveaway with Artex who are kindly giving away to five people a giant little gouache pack and also some other goodies and all you have to do is paint your favourite book so not paint on the book you don't need to do that you just need to paint your favourite book cover in your style and tag me and Artex on Instagram and then we will pick a winner in probably a couple of weeks and you can receive your own set of gouache and some pens and things like that. So five winners will get those products and then also another 10 people are gonna get a surprise gift and all the other participants can get a discount code for Artex. It's really kind of them to send out these prizes to you guys so please uh, take a look at the competition. I will link my Instagram and their Instagram in in the description. Let's get to painting the book. Okay, first of all, this made me cringe as much as it's making you cringe, but there was a shiny element embossed um, onto the book cover that I had to scratch off with a nail file. And I know that's horrific. <laughs> as I was doing it, I was like, what am I doing? This is horrendous. I had to do it to help the paint stick to the book cover and I think it really helped me out a lot. So that's why I'm using this kind of, I didn't have any sandpaper, so I had to use a nail file, which is really, you know, the bougie lifestyle that I live. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I scratched that off. So I was able to paint and make the paint stick better. This time round, I decided to kind of handle out where I would be drawing on the book, um, painting on the book because I felt like I had a very specific design in mind and I wanted the composition to be exactly how I had thumbnailed it out. So I used a watercolour pencil to draw on top of the book and luckily it really made a mark on top of the book, which I, I didn't know if it was going to work or not. So it gave me a sort of outline, it's a very rough outline of where to paint and where each element of the composition was going to go. Because it was also a watercolour pencil, it blended in nicely, it just kind of faded away all the pigment, which is a really handy tip that I picked up watching YouTube. I saw somebody using a watercolour pencil as an undersketch for a painting and I was like, that's brilliant. Why have I never thought about doing that before? Because it just fades away the pencil marks and I think I might do that from now on. Even though I'm kind of used to just going ahead and painting straightforward, I think maybe I might do a little rough outline from now on using watercolour pencils. I think it's just a great way to navigate what you're going to be painting and stuff like that. Sometimes I make mistakes and uh, Maybe it's laziness or maybe it's just like the way that I like to do my art. I'm a bit haphazard. I kind of just go for stuff and it has its positives, but it also has its negatives. So on the book cover, I decided to paint a figure of a woman. Now it could either be Abra or it could be um, the villain of this book who is called Rose the Hat. And I didn't want to draw because Rose the Hat appears a lot with this like top hat which is kind of like this magical thing that she has. I didn't want to draw that because I wanted it to, to be up to the viewer who maybe they're looking at. And so it's sort of kind of a stylized abstract take on the book cover because the the perspective is a little bit off but it's kind of intentional because I wanted it to be as if we're floating through something and her hair has become like a night sky and it's floating up to the clouds and she's sleeping in bed but then the cat who appears in the story as well is appearing on her bed and it's not necessarily meet any part of the book or any scene because I've read a lot about um, book cover illustration and apparently the best way to do uh, a book cover illustration is sort of to hint at what's inside the book but never actually draw like a complete scene. Like never expect it to be something that will happen inside the book and just sort of hint at maybe the characters or things inside the book and I think that's a really cool thing. I always try to think about how that would work when I do these book cover paint overs. So I watched a movie last night for this book and I really liked the movie. It's a good movie, but it's definitely a sequel to Stanley Couric. I think I'm saying his name right. 
it's definitely a sequel to the movie. It's not really a sequel to the book because the book is very different to what the movie comes to. And I think if you're a fan of The Shining, the film, I think it's a great uh, add-on to it. I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't know, it doesn't really tie everything up for me very well. I don't want to spoil anything, don't worry, I won't spoil anything, but yeah, if you've watched both movies, maybe you understand what I think, because I think the fir- like the first two thirds of the film are really great, and I think the final act is a little bit like playing to the audience of the movies rather than the books, and it's very different to what actually happens in the book. And I know, obviously, like not everything can stay the same when they do adaptations, but I think if you're going to deviate so much from the original content, I don't know, I just don't think it works so much for me. I really enjoyed the book. I think it is a lot more thriller-esque than it is horror, as The Shining is kind of pure horror. Like, it's the first horror I ever read, and I absolutely love that book. So I was really interested to read Doctor Sleep, and I did really enjoy the book itself. I really like elements of it but I think it's not as good as The Shining. Maybe some people disagree, it kind of depends on your personal taste, like if you prefer a bit more thriller or a bit more horror. I love the universe of Stephen King's books because I guess it's all kind of the same universe and The Shining where people have the power to read minds but there's also a horror element. I really love that mixture of themes because I don't know, I haven't, I, I guess I need to read more horror but I think that is what makes it interesting is how it has these magical elements but also this terrifying elements as well and I really appreciate that. Overall I really like the way that it felt to paint over this book. I used the gouache, the Artex gouache obviously and an ink pen to draw the outlines at the end and also I used a paint marker to just kind of define the stars in the sky in her hair. I really wanted an abstract theme to this and I really like the way that I've built up the paint. I like that the under paint is like this orange hue so it kind of shines on around them and it gives a little bit of depth to this. I think I'm going to be using that style more frequently in paintings in the future. So that's my overall book. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I will see you at the end. And I think that's the final piece. I really like the way that this turned out. I think that this really fits the story for me. I wanted it to be a little bit abstract, but also have some sort of symbolism of what happens in the story. And so I kind of drew Abra here, but it could also be taken as like, maybe it's Rose the Hat. I don't know. It's kind of up to the viewer's idea. I had an idea to keep like, maybe put the top hat in, but I wanted it to be like, maybe it could be either of the the women in the story. And then I wanted to include the cat that is on the original cover that I read because I really love the, the cat cover. I'm obviously a cat person so I had to put the cat in there. And yeah, I really like the way that this turned out. I think it's really cute. I really did actually quite like the cover of this one. The film cover was quite cool to be honest but it fits more the movie which deters so much from the original content of the book that I think 
he deserved a paint over. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to check out the competition in the Instagram links down below. Make sure you're following me and Artex and just create your own favorite book cover. It can be an illustration of your favorite book cover. It can be your own design of a fav of your favorite book. And yeah, just have fun with it, guys. I hope that you guys really enjoy it. And uh, I look forward to seeing your entries on Instagram. Thanks, everybody. Please like and subscribe for more content. And I will see you next time. Bye. I would like to give a massive shout out to all my beautiful, beautiful patrons for supporting me. They are Lucille, Tim and Charlotte, Jacqueline, Ace Tobolum, Alex, Steph, Eva and Megaya. If you guys would like to sign up for Patreon rewards, check out the link down below. Thanks.